They say that we are part of the last generation to witness glaciers, to witness these icy giant remnants of the last 10,000 years. Unsettling, as it should be. But are we taking the right lessons out of this monumental event? Climate change is a big problem. Probably the biggest one that we as a species have ever faced. And we're only just realizing it now. There are students going on the street everywhere. There are hashtags, there are entire political parties devoted to the protection of the environment. It has become very fashionable to protect the planet. And in principle, that's great. But it comes with certain disadvantages. This trendy side of environmentalism brings with it many deceptions and half-truths to the well-meaning and opportunities to the opportunists. People don't know much about the scientific nature of this disaster and have embraced the fact that looking like caring about it will raise their social status. This isn't bad on its own, but when you consider that we could be shaping policies to face the most difficult challenge ever based on the demands of the badly informed, you start to realize that this may not be a matter of good intentions, but one of logic facts, and most importantly, science. The prime example for this exact problem is the political trajectory of nuclear power. With catastrophes like Fukushima still vividly in our memory, it has become incredibly unpopular. The fact that it is one of the most difficult sources of electricity to understand doesn't help. Basically everywhere it has been protested against. Ironically, by the very people who are today protesting climate change. Why ironically? Because if it wasn't so unpopular, nuclear power could be our greatest ally in the fight against climate change. Yes, it is tragic that we are decreasing biodiversity daily. And yes, it is tragic that we are literally trashing the ocean. But all of this pales in comparison to the cataclysm that is global warming. Imagine the wars we will wage over a billion refugees said to be caused by climate change. Imagine the deaths caused by droughts and floods, caused by rising temperatures. And imagine the collapse of countries and societies caused by a lack of resources. Let's look at the main sources of CO2. A diagram every politician and climate activist, in my opinion, should have taped to the inside of their glasses. There are prejudices and misinformation about a lot of these subjects. It is worth informing oneself about every single one of them. But I want to focus on the biggest source of CO2, energy production. Depending on the statistics you look at, it makes up anywhere from 25 to 50%, averaging at about 45% of our total carbon dioxide production. In fact, it produces so much greenhouse gas that reducing it by only 3.5% would mean as much as stopping all air traffic. Another thing unique to this source of CO2 is how much its efficiency can be impacted by new technologies. All of this contributes to the fact that we cannot miss out on an opportunity to reduce the CO2 output of energy production. Nuclear power is such an opportunity. In fact, nuclear energy leaves the smallest footprint on the environment and has historically been responsible for fewer deaths than any other source of electricity, even if you include the catastrophes of Fukushima and Chernobyl. The problem is that the two big failures in nuclear history have burned themselves into the public memory more than a million small accidents ever could. And also, we are judging this technology by reactors built 40 years ago. 
modern technologies like thorium reactors or waste-powered facilities are not being implemented or even funded because of this fear of a technology most of its critics don't quite understand. Not many people know that nobody has ever died because of nuclear waste. Even fewer people know of the advancements made in reactor technology. Every time someone brings this up, they seem to be dismissed quickly because nuclear power never seems to be an option. But let me say this, anyone who would rather cause 7 million deaths a year by polluting the air than tackle this much more solvable problem is either not understanding the situation or willfully causing harm and destruction. Climate change is too big of a challenge for us not to think about it as logically as we can. We will not solve this problem if we don't put our effort where it means most.